Hi, welcome to the bond video. We're going to be talking about how to do calculations for bonds. We'll give you just an overview of things and then we'll get into the calculations, the journal entries, and then some more examples of how to do it. Of the things we talk about in this class, you should be aware that this is one of three very hard topics when it comes to uh, calculations. We go over earnings per share, we go over cash flow statement, we go over bonds. Those three things are the three most complicated things in this class. So if you don't pick it up uh, initially, don't take it personally. This is, a, this is a harder topic, all right? But I promise you, time on task, the more you do these problems, the more you look to understand what's going on, the more, better you'll do on them. And this is something you can pick up, but it is complicated. So let's giddy up. Okay, so what is a bond? Well, this is an example of a bond. It's basically a contract, except for it's kind of like a standardized contract. Uh, uh, this is a security that people are able to trade back and forth, similar to a stock, except for it's a debt security. And so instead of training, trading in ownership of a company, you're trading in the debt. So this example right here, this one is for the Ford Motor Company. All right, this is the face value of the bond. So this is a $5,000 bond right here. That's the face value. And then bonds will often have a coupon rate. This one is eight and one eighth percent. And it's listed right here. This is one for the Dow Chemical Company. If you look at the Dow Chemical Company, uh, you'll notice similar things. Uh, it has a face value. This one has a face value of $1,000. It's for Dow Chemical. This one has a different coupon rate. And you'll notice the last one was around 8%. This one is 7.625%. Uh, this is the coupon rate that is paid uh, on this bond. So there's, there's this feature where, you know, this is the bond company. There is the face value. And then there's this coupon rate right here. This is another bond. And this one is for uh, the Commonwealth of Australia. All right. Commonwealth of Australia, and this is similar too. It, it has a face value. So this is a bond for $20, all right? $20, and it notice it has this percentage right here, all right? That is the coupon payment. That's the amount that's paid. And, well, what's a coupon payment? All right, so this face value right here tells you the amount that is to be paid at the end of the term of the bond, all right? So however many years it is, at the end of that, this amount, in this case, $20 will be paid on this bond, all right? This coupon payment, this amount right here, it's called a coupon payment because way back in the day, like way back in the day, there was this thing called paper, right? And uh, you used it and you wrote on it. And when you wrote on it or you mailed things in it, like you sent it and people would pick up your paper and deliver it to other people. Uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. Well, anyway, back in the day when there was paper, uh, they you would get this bond and you would get these little coupons here. This one right here, and then there's one right here, and then there's one right here, and then there's one right here. And these coupon payments right here, each one of these coupon payments would be something you'd cut out, you'd mail in, and then you'd get a check for that, that coupon payment. So the coupon payment is the amount the bond pays, 5 and one fourth percent, all right? Same as this up here. And these are coupons that you would cut out and mail in. Well, uh, everything's digital now. So we don't really cut out these coupons and send them in, but they're still con called coupon payments because it used to be on paper. So this is the face value right here. That's the coupon rate. All right, so what is a bond? It's a contract. All right, contract typically has two main promises. It doesn't always have the fixed payments. It could just be a zero coupon. It could be one of the two, but for, for our point of the conversation, it usually has a terminal payment and then fixed payments in between, all right? The face value of the bond is the payment at the end of the period and the coupon payment are the intermittent payments in between, all right? And so when you think about it, uh, you can think about, the the payments like this here's a timeline right so and then there is a payment here here and here and here uh related to coupon payments and then at the end there is a final coupon payment so this this is a bond that has five coupon payments on it and then at the maturity it also pays the principal amount so in the case of the last example that was the twenty dollars and this amount was the five 
uh, percent. It was like five and one fourth, I believe. All right, five and one fourth. All right. So these cash flows that are happening in the future, these are fixed payments. These are things that are happening. And so people will buy the bond based on what they think those payments and those cash flows are worth. So it's important to remember that uh, back on the prior slide, this coupon payment, this thing right here, this is set out by the contract right here. This is set in the contract, not by the market. In the case of Ford Motor Company, it was this amount here. In the case of Dow Chemical, it was this amount here. And in this, in, and in Australia, it was this amount here. This is not something based on the market. This is just part of the contract. It has a percentage and people frequently look at this and get this confused with the rate market rate of interest versus the rate of interest on the security. So let me explain. There's this thing called the time value of money. All right. So the time value of money, the basic principle is a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future. And the reason for this is that you could take that dollar, invest it and make more money. And so a dollar today, the dollars in the future are worth less than dollars today, all else equal. There's, an anal there's a great analogy that can be used to illustrate this. To illustrate this point, there's a famous historical study done by at Stanford University called the Marshmallow Experiment, where they brought a bunch of kids into the room and they said, hey, look, if you wait and don't eat the marshmallow that's sitting right in front of your face, um, I'll come back in a little bit and I'll give you two marshmallows. And uh, there were some kids that ate it immediately and some kids that were waiting for the next marshmallow, marshmallow and two marshmallows. And the idea, I mean, if I was one of those kids, you might be able to justify that, you know, doing what the kids did of, of gobbling it down quick and eating it fast versus waiting this kid is just great. He, you put it down, the guy's explaining something and he just starts eating it, right? So this, that's probably what I would have been. Apparently with the marshmallow experiment, the people that ate the marshmallow early uh, did poorly later in life. Uh, they tried to replicate it. It was hard to replicate, but illustrates kind of a principle. A marshmallow that's sitting right in front of you is technically worth a little bit more than a marshmallow that may or may not come in the future, all right? So a dollar in your hand uh, is more worth more than a potential dollar in the future. That's the basic idea between uh, of time value of money. You need to come up with a way of calculating all of these fixed payments that a bond has that values what the dollars will be that are being given in the future on these different dates. We need to discount them and bring them back to present value. Because if I get a dollar here and another dollar here, here, the dollar here is worth less than the dollar that I get here, right? And so we have to figure out a way to discount it, to, to figure out what it's, what we call present value is. And so there's a present value calculation. So let's go through a bond example uh, of this. And we'll go through the calculation. And I'm just gonna do this long form initially because uh, you need to see how long it will take if you don't use your calculator. You remember to pick up your calculator, right? You remember to buy it because I'm not sure Amazon will give it to you now. So this example will go through the long form and show you how the calculation's done, what's going on inside of the components inside that calculator. Currently, the, the principal payment, this is the face value right here of the bond, is $1,000. Coupon interest rate or stated or contractual rate of interest, this is the coupon rate, all right? So 10% and it's annual, all right? Uh, and the maturity is in five years, so it's due in five years, all right? So we're gonna make an assumption about the market rate. We're gonna come back to this. The market rate of interest, we're making an, a, an assumption now. We're gonna say the market rate equals this coupon rate just for now. Uh, the question is, is, well, what's the payment schedule and what's the present value of these cash flow payments? So if you take this formula, the formula that was on that prior page right here, if you take this formula, run the cash flow payments through the formula, you'll find what the value is. Let's talk about this formula. What this formula says is, well, what's the future dollar value? So this is future value equals the dollars, all right? This right here, this I is the interest rate. And this N is the number of periods. 
And this formula tells us what the present value of these future cash flows are. So remember, we have this principal payment and that's gonna be given us, to us in five years, all right? And then coupon, coupon interest rate is 10%. Well, what's 10% of 1,000? It's $100. <coughs> $100. And that's going to be paid every year for five years, including the, the fifth year. All right. Market rate on the date of the bond was 10%. The bond will be issued at par. So this 10% right here, that tells us the market rate of interest. That's the this 10%. Right now, we're keeping two 10% in there for simplicity. If we actually do the actual cash payment schedule, we'll get $100 after the end of 12 months. 24 months, on, on, and on. We'll get this interest, this coupon payment. Coupon payment, all right? Then we get a principal payment. We, we get goose egg here. Nothing, 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 nothing. Absolutely nothing until the very end. And we get this payment. So the total payments we receive are $100, $100, $100, $100, $100 and then in the final period, we get $1,100, okay? Now, the question is, is yeah, all those... All that cash is 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 technically fifteen hundred dollars in cash. But what's it worth today? Is the question. What is it worth now, right now? Because we could invest that. We got alternatives. We don't have to buy certain bonds. We can invest in a lot of other things. So the question is: is well, what's the discount value? What's the amount for that? Well, the, we discount it by ten percent. And so if you take a hundred dollars and run it through this first hundred dollars and run it through this equation, the present value is gonna equal $91. And notice something, if we do this for each one of these $100 payments that we get, the actual dollar amount that it's worth in the present value goes down. This makes sense. The further something is out, the more uncertainty there is, more risk associated with it. All Alternatively, there's also other alternatives you can invest in. There's other ways for you to make money if you had the money today instead of in the future. So the discount rate represents that discount rate represents the fact that you don't have the money today. And so we would expect to see the cash flows, the same amount, this $100 that you see right here, this $100 here, here, and here, that $100 should be going down in present value terms over time, even though the payments are the same, all right? So those future cash flows, the further out they go, the less they're worth to me today because the further out they are. Well, if we do this calculation, we end up with $91, $83, $75, $68, and then what's the $1,100 worth when we put it into this equation? It's worth $683. If we add up all of these, the present value of the bond is $1,000. Now, a lot of you are going to be thinking, Kyle, Kyle, what? Why did we just do all this? Why are we going through this long thing? I could have told you, look, I see this thousand here. There's another thousand right up here. Like, man, I could have told you that. I could just guess and it's always going to be a thousand here, a thousand here. I don't have to, I don't have to do all these like crazy calculations down here. Well, guess what? You do. Because remember, we assumed our market rate right here was the same as the coupon rate. When that changes, it changes everything and you end up with bonds that are valued at different rates. So that's doing it this way takes a long time. We're going to use the calculator, but I just wanted to show you this process of doing it. So this will probably, you could do this by hand and do these calculations by hand to just see and get a sense of what's going on here. But uh, we typically use the calculator for this. So <clears throat> where the calculation gets kind of, uh, uh, changes up a little bit is when we have bonds that are sold at a discount or a premium. So what does this mean? So we have our stated coupon rate. The coupon rate doesn't change. This is the fixed amount in the contract. It's written into the contract. The, the market makers created it. They were hired. The brokerage house was hired to create this and they're creating the bond and they're going to, it's already there. It's in the contract. All right. The market rate is based on what the market decides they wanna pay for this asset. Now, they might decide that, yeah, 10% is about right, uh, or they might think, do you know what? You're riskier than that. And as a result of being riskier than that, 
I don't know that I'm gonna pay you a thousand dollars. I'm gonna pay something less. You're a riskier bet, all right? And and the alternative is there could be a premium. If there's a premium, that means they say, do you know what? 10% is more interest than you probably should pay as an organization. So as a result, we're gonna charge you less, all right? So premium uh, happens when uh, a premium for security happens is when the market bids up the price and as a result, the market rate of return on the, on the bond because they're paying more, in this case, than $1,000, the market rate of interest goes down, all right? And in this alternative, firms are not being able to sell their bonds for the stated par value, and so there's a discount to the value. Firms get their value discounted. The value gets taken off for the firm. Uh, they're not able to sell their bonds for the, for the face value. As a result, the market decides, you know what? You're going to have to pay us more interest. Uh, we're going to pay less than what the face value is on the bond. So this, that type of bond is going to be issued at a discount. Everybody loves the bonds that are issued by par because the market rate of interest right here matches the coupon rate. And it's very easy to do the calculation there. You don't even need to calculate it, right? But premium and discount, that's where you, the rubber hits the road, and that's where we separate uh, people in the class that are gunners that want to achieve and want to nail this and everyone else. This is a scene from Trading Places. Uh, great Eddie Murphy movie where they show a market. This is not a bond market, but what you see happening here is there's a lot of different traders and they're trading uh, different securities. And this happens in bond markets. And each one of these people on the floor are debating the prices with each other that they're willing to, to, to do on securities. And the arguing and the uh, the, the screens are basically updates on information on price. And so that people calling things out, Hey, I want to buy it for this, or, Hey, I want to buy it for that. They're making a market for, uh, different securities that are out there. And it's in that market that the rate of return is, uh, created because they determine what they're willing to buy securities for. So if they're willing to buy securities for less than what the face value is, we call that being issued at a discount, a discount right here. And if they're willing to pay more for the security than what the face value is, is a premium. And so whatever they pay, if it's more or less, there is an intrinsic interest rate because they go higher or lower than that face value. And we have to figure out what the value is of the bond based on that, that amount. So to do that, we're gonna use the BA2 plus calculator, all right? So this is the calculator we're gonna use. I have an emulator on my computer, so we'll go through it on the computer. Alternatively, if you want, uh, you could be super old school and use this cal calculator. All the old farts use this calculator, the HP 12C, uh, and some of them like it, some students like it. I'm not gonna go over it because uh, I think it has a few extra steps. I think it takes a little longer and I think uh, the, the Texas instrument calculator makes a little bit more sense. So see you in the next video.